for like a cloud system at Ericsson. We have a few colleagues of mine. We have Steven Peacock, who's representing uh, cloud, all, all that we do when it comes to services side. And you will have my colleague uh, Jason Hoffman, also speaking here. We will briefly we'll go into the cloud launch in more detail. Then we also have our dear partners here. <coughs> Matt from uh, Gartan, John from Cleversafe, and Dan from uh, from uh, uh, So, so um, maybe you were part of the. I, I, at least I know some of you were part of the, of the press conference we had this morning. I think the big announcement there was what we're doing on the on the other side, the launch of what we call the Ericsson Data. Uh, hyperscale data center system, which is a partnership uh, where we are with Intel, where we are leveraging Intel's rack scale architecture, uh, really bringing out what we call this aggregated hardware world well, first. Then we uh, we also have uh, a launch of our uh, secure cloud storage, and that we are doing partner ourselves and partner together with, with our partner Clarice. We also talk about what we do in the security space where we are able to uh, secure uh, identity, authenticity, integrity I should say about all the data that we have in our in our infrastructure in the cloud systems. Uh, so pretty much that's it. Uh, if you want to come forward here yes, sir. Uh, this is Jason Hoffman uh, working in my team. We also have Howard Wu running the hardware product line in my team. Uh, so I'll leave it over to Jason to continue a little bit more on the cloud launch in the Yeah, great. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you, everyone, for joining joining today. So no, no, no French translation, right? Not at the moment. No, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's all right. So I'm, I'm, I'm Jason Hoffman. Hey. <laughs> um, so, so, so on this, we, we're starting with a, um, you know, basic hypothesis, if you will, and that is that largely, um, you know, our, our our customer base and even broadly and within the global 2000 uh, today typically deploy infrastructure that tells them what their business and their go-to-market markets are. Um, and we think that, you know, people are looking to put infrastructure in place that allows them to do any business model and any go-to-market on top of it. Uh, and that's that's largely how, you know, cloud technologies to date, you know, have, have fallen short. So how do I do a highly standardized, highly industrialized infrastructure? It's inspirational for my people to use within the company and drive new business models and to go to markets on top of it. How do I have generalized infrastructure that still lets me accomplish every specialized workload that I need to do? The other one, of course, is when you look at um, two axes within the industry today. On one hand, we have this need to actually innovate and develop new applications and use data within our businesses much more rapidly than, than before. Uh, and of course, that leads to, in some cases, ungoverned clouds and shadow IT type approaches. We, we also see behaviors where people are, are not innovating and in fact are very concerned with, with governance and security and locking down infrastructure from, from a policy standpoint. So we think that a lot of global executives are, in fact, making this trade-off between speed and risk. They're making a trade-off between governance and innovation. And we think there's an opportunity here to sit down and say, how do we put infrastructure in place that allows people to rapidly innovate, do new applications, combine data in new ways, yet actually have a phenomenal governance model? Right. So we make all the stakeholders happy. So really thinking about this type of industrialization approach, as we said, where how do we start putting infrastructure in place 
that's capable of continuously improving as an actual strategic differentiator for our customers actually allows them to sort of rapidly experiment and do a lot of things on, on top of it, all the while still accomplishing everything they have to accomplish today. So when we start looking at the business values we're trying to drive behind the Ericsson Cloud Push, on the first hand down there is what we call modern plus legacy. So this type of industrialization of infrastructure, this type of modernization of infrastructure does require a next generation platform to be put in place, yet we also recognize that there is existing legacy. And when you think of, of Ericsson, um, Ericsson is very good at helping people modernize to a next generation infrastructure while helping them manage previous generations of legacy. And we think that's of course true within networks, it's also true within all the IT infrastructure and everything else. How do we drive this modernization? We'll do it later soon. We're very experienced for, with building infrastructure for the most demanding environments. Now we're broadening this out a, a, a bit, and this, this can be demanding from a performance and a scale and a quality standpoint. It can also be demanding economically. We're trying to sit down and have clouds be economic systems and meet the demands of both the CFO as well as the CIO and the CTO. We think that the real driver there that people are trying to do with this infrastructure is run their businesses in real time. So how do we start doing new applications and taking the data and using it to actually make real time business decisions? And then finally, you'll hear us talking a lot today, both with, you know, John from Cleversafe, the partner on the storage side, Matt uh, from GuardTime, a uh, partner on the data integrity side. But just like how Spectrum is the key asset class within radio, data is the key asset cl class of clouds. Um, and so how do we start taking that into account from the hardware all the way, all the way up? So you see like one of the things that, you know, Howie's product line launched today with Intel was a whole new class of, of data center hardware. That's very storagey in its design. It's like a storage environment you can run applications on. Just like our, our Blade server platform is basically a big switch that you can run applications on. And so anchoring this very much in both a storage and a data strategy, but having this, this be data that you can actually trust as far as its integrity and its ability to be encrypted and so on. We'll have John and Matt talk more, more about that. So what we're announcing today is a much broader portfolio for, for Ericsson. Uh, so that means uh, actually having a product portfolio around data centers and data center infrastructure management, uh, broadening our hardware portfolio from a central office and that's compliant telecom system that is a, a vital component in the central office transformation that our customers have to go through. But then broadening that to include a full hardware portfolio for the data center as well so that we can be that trusted hardware partner for our customer base. Then also from a platform software, you see out in the, the, the demo area out there, you'll see our the Ericsson Continuum product that we got from the AppSera acquisition. So making sure that we have something around an application and data platform. And then we're starting to launch more and more data and storage services. And the first one, of course, being our optic storage uh, you know, product that we'll have there. We'll continue flushing that out. If we look at the product pillars here, how we're trying to differentiate across this portfolio, the first one on the end there is accessibility. We believe that the key attribute of clouds is that clouds are highly accessible environments. So if you want to come with one distinguishing key attribute of clouds, clouds are highly accessible and programmable, non-clouds aren't. And then the goal of these types of systems, the goal of that accessibility is to, is to automate everything. And the purpose of automation is to make these types of infrastructures error-free. Take, take the human out of the loop in many ways. But if you're going to automate, you have to govern. You can't just make an army of robots and not make sure they, they can't take over the world. 
And so then having governance models <coughs> around performance and scalability and quality, those are what we're very good at doing governance on. Right? That, that, that's our bread and butter. But adding to that governance around the economics of that infrastructure, because we do recognize that our customers have to do a hundred times more with the same budgets. Right? So how are we driving driving that part? So real economic governance and realize that clouds are an, an economic system. And then governance around the security aspects of these things. So how are we having the typical, you know, accessibility type type sort of issues? How are we guaranteeing confidentiality in these systems? How are we guaranteeing integrity of these systems? And then, of course, doing governance around compliance. So really governance around these six areas. Performance, scalability, quality, compliance, security, and the economics of these types of systems. And then what you'll see is we're taking a unique security approach in these. We, 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 we call it security the, the Swedish model. You know, meaning that, no, the beautiful thing about Sweden is I can go to like my neighbor's farm and I can pick blueberries and pet his cow and have a nice picnic. I mean, it, all land is accessible, okay? And normally the security industry limits access to systems. And we just said that clouds have to be highly accessible. We also know that ensuring confidentiality is one, one part of it. But really the issue and the real, the real sort of thing that the security industry um, needs to start driving that we're going to do is really making sure that we're also guaranteeing the integrity of these systems and the integrity of the data on the systems. So really making sure that integrity of this is, is a key part. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so of course we, we did launch the new hardware today. That's one critical part of it. And on the new hardware, we're trying to, to, to do a, a couple things. So one, have disruptive economics around this hardware. So how are we delivering public cloud service provider-like economics uh, within private environments? You'll also notice if you go out and you take a look at the hardware, is this hardware enables component-based lifecycle <coughs> management, not system-based lifecycle management. So you can actually lifecycle the motherboards independently of the storage subsystem, independent of the connectivity, independent of the mechanics. And so rather than you know buying an entire rack of things and three years later buying another entire rack of things, being able to just incrementally upgrade just the motherboards, use disaggregated resources that you pull back in, so breaking the, the refresh cycle. The other thing that's, I think, interesting about that hardware is it comes with very unique software. And so the software that it comes with from a, a hardware equipment management perspective and how we manage that entire um, system, that hardware supports all existing third-party hardware. And so um, being able to put the HDS 8000 into a data center means that the software that it comes with is able to see the entire hardware fleet collect data from that entire fleet around when you bought that system, when you should get rid of it, what's on it, and then function as a control system for that as well. So uniquely, the hardware comes with the industry's first non-vendor specific hardware management. You know, so we decided to be very open on there. Uh, and then, of course, this is a, a scalable system. So going from one rack to thousands of racks with the same management capabilities is a, a critical aspect to it. And then of course, you know, we're actually pretty good at hardware. Um, and we have, we've deployed out this type of footprint into 187 countries today. And so being able to do this uh, globally was very important. And with that, before, before we get to the Q&A, we want to do a, a couple introduction of, of our partners to come up and speak with. We'll have Dan from Intel come up first and wanted to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what we're doing together. All right. Thank you, Jason. So I'm Dan Rodriguez. I'm the product marketing director for Intel's wireless infrastructure business. And I'm very excited to be here at this launch. 
Uh, we've been partners and collaborators with Ericsson for a number of years. And of course, that journey started with Intel and Communications, but we're very pleased with Ericsson extending its business into the cloud and extending that play collaboration with the launch of the H HDS 8000. Now, both cloud and network infrastructure are going through a transformation, a transformation that's requiring operators to meet the ever-increasing demands of connectivity as well as real-time data. And in that transformation, we share a lot of similar goals with Ericsson such as be able to provide underlying technologies as well as innovative products to enable, to enable operators to meet and deliver services more quickly as well as deliver new revenue streams as well as lower overall TCO. Now you heard Jason mention the HS8000 is based on Intel rack scale architecture. This is something we're very proud of. It's something that's been a great uh, collaboration with Ericsson. And this rack scale architecture enables the disaggregation of compute network and storage resources. And by pooling those resources, you're able to get dramatic reductions, not only cabling, but power, but also increase the overall compute density within your infrastructure. In addition to this collaboration, we're also working with Ericsson on another very important project. It's the open platform for, Net for NFE, or OPNFE. And in this collaboration, we're essentially trying to bring some of the data center and cloud technology, such as virtualization, as well as cloud-based scale and economics to the world of telecoms. And then finally, another area we're collaborating on, as you heard Jason mention, uh, security solutions. We're also working with Ericsson, providing underlying hardware capabilities to enable uh, Ericsson's integrated security solution to promote wide uh, adoption of their cloud technology. And with that, also again, thank Ericsson for allowing us to be part of the launch, and also again, congratulate them on the each. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you, Dad. No, it was, uh, you know, every every. every